In this video, you are going to learn everything you need to know to get started on Frost Mage in Cataclassic. You're going to learn the best race, the best talents, glyphs, gear, and professions. Well, and of course, the macros to get you instantly ahead of the competition this season. Okay, so before we start, if you want a fresh UI for Cata using our brand new skill capped add on, be sure to check out our updated classic site at skillcap.com. We've got literally everything you need to make sure you don't fall behind in the latest expansion, including specialized guides at your fingertips from rank one players, which will teach you exactly what you need to master your class. From maximizing damage to mastering CC and more, everything is covered. And while everyone else is going to be slowly figuring everything out themselves, you can skip this process with skill cap quickly putting you ahead of the competition. So much so, in fact, that we literally guarantee you'll gain at least 400 rating when actively using our service. So join us today using the exclusive discount link in the description below. Anyway, let's get back to the video. So let's kick things off with the character select screen where it's time to choose your race. Now, as with most classes, human is gonna be the best option if you're playing Alliance. The double damage trinket is just simply too good to pass up. Now, this is because of Will to Survive, which allows you to break out of any crowd control on a two minute cooldown. Now, as a result, you can equip two damage trinkets instead of one. This can easily help you land kills and give you access to more PVE damage trinkets. Now, your alternative pick for the Alliance is gonna be No. You won't see this recommended too often, but for Mage, the expansive mind racial that increases your mana pool can be extremely useful Additionally, mage survivability is tied to your ability to kite, so having an extra root break from escape artist can really go a long way. Now, for horde, you really only have one option to choose from, and your best option is gonna be orc. The stun reduction provided by orc is very powerful and can easily be the difference between winning and losing a game. Blood Fury is also a nice bonus as this effectively serves as a mini trinket. Now, while Horde is a solid option, most mages are gonna find themselves on the Alliance playing human as this helps to optimize our gearing strategy. Talents work slightly different in Cataclysm, so let's break down everything that you need to know. There is only one build that you're gonna be playing and all of our talents are mandatory, so there's not gonna be any changes or flexible talent points. You'll notice that Deep Freeze is back as the capstone talent for the Frost Tree. This provides us a five second stun usable on any frozen target. This does provide some damage to targets that are immune to stuns, but we generally don't wanna use it for this purpose as the stun effect is honestly too powerful. We only have one point in Enduring Winter as the bonus mana regeneration proc does not change with the number of points. This only increases the chance of the proc. This is a nice bonus, but it's not gonna be important enough to invest any more points into. In the fire tree, we wanna make sure to pick up impact. All of our damaging spells have a chance to make our next fire blast stun the target for two seconds. The amazing thing about impact is that it's on its own stun DR, so it doesn't impact deep freeze. You can even chain a deep freeze off of an impact stun. So along with talents, the glyph system has changed a little bit in Cataclysm as well. Now you're gonna have three additional prime glyph slots on top of major and minor. Your glyphs are fairly set in stone here and the same are for all builds, but there is one small adjustment you can make in the major glyphs, which we're gonna cover later. Glyph of Frostfire Bolt increases the damage by a significant amount and also makes this ability apply a dot at the cost of removing the slow. Glyph of Ice Lance is a simple damage increase to one of our most commonly used abilities. Glyph of Frostbolt increases the critical strike chance of this ability. Now your builds are gonna have the same three major glyphs, Evocation, Frost Armor, and Polymorph. Glyph of Ice Barrier increases the amount of damage absorbed by Ice Barrier. This is a significant boost to our survivability. Glyph of Frost Armor is going to make you regenerate 2% of your mana every 5 seconds while Frost Armor is active. And finally, we have Glyph of Polymorph, which causes the spell to remove all dots on the target. 
This is gonna ensure that Polymorph doesn't break instantly. You do have the option of dropping Glyph of Frost Armor for Glyph of Evocation, which will cause Evocation to also heal you over its duration. This can turn the ability into a defensive. You're gonna run the risk of going out of mana if you make this swap, so it's not recommended by default. Finally, our minor glyphs are actually pretty useful. Glyph of Arcane Brilliance reduces the mana cost of Arcane Brilliance by 50%. This can be amazing into comps with a lot of purges. Glyph of Armors will increase the duration of any mage armor by 30 minutes, so you don't need to refresh it as often. Our final minor glyph is Glyph of Snowfall, as this removes the Regent requirement. You're going to be using Slowfall to juke a Death Knight's Dark Simulacrum. Okay, so before we continue, we have an exclusive skill cap tip to help you get started in Kata PvP, coming directly from our new classic course. Now it's time to talk about our last and most frequently used damage global of Ice Lance. And although it will hit for a pretty pitiful amount when unempowered, Ice Lance will be our main way of landing kills. Now, this is because of Fingers of Frost, causing it to deal 25% more damage, as well as making it shatter, along with the fact that Ice Lance will deal double damage to frozen targets, although do be aware that these two effects do not double dip, so don't bother trying to send out Fingers Ice Lances into Roots for the extra effect. What it does mean, however, is that a huge part of our rotation and burst consists of using Cone of Cold and Frost Nova for damage and then sending Ice Lances into it, causing the Ice Lance to not just shatter, but also deal two times the damage that it normally would. This is especially effective to do if you're waiting for your Frostfire Orb to generate your procs and you don't want to have dead globals, or the enemy team has too many ways to interrupt your Frost Bolts. By utilizing Ice Lance and Roots, we can deal high instant damage without needing fingers procs. If you want to learn more tips like these, then check out our brand new class courses at skillcap.com by using the links below. All right, next up, let's go over your best in-slot gear for Season 9. First up, let's go over stat priority. You're going to want as much intellect as possible. You'll naturally acquire this, though, through your gear. After that, your highest priority is hitting the 4% cap. This ensures that your abilities don't miss and nothing is more frustrated when you're about to win the game and then your killing blow just totally misses the target. You're then going to need 195 spell penetration. This is going to ensure that your spells do not miss. You'll then want to get at least 3000 resilience. You'll now have the option of going full crit or full mastery. Now we recommend Full Mastery as this increases your damage against frozen targets, and this is how we primarily burst. Haste is last in our priority, and although it is useful, it isn't more impactful than Crit or Mastery. But before we show you your best in slot, be sure to check out our article site after the video for your pre-biz gear using the link in the description below. Now, let's take a look at what items you should aim to get as the season progresses. Now, in Season 9, all of your best in-slot gear is going to come from PvP, with the exception of your trinket, although this too is going to be swapped out for a PvP trinket. Your main pieces will be the Vicious Gladiator's Regalia set, which includes the Vicious Gladiator's Silk Cowl, Amice, Robe, Handguards. For your off pieces, you're going to want Vicious Gladiator's Drape of Diffusion for our spell penetration. Your bracers will be Vicious Gladiator's Cuffs of Prowess. Vicious Gladiator's Cord of Cruelty in the Waste slot. And finally, to round out our off pieces, you have Vicious Gladiator's Treads of Cruelty in the Boot slot. For your weapons, you're going to be using Vicious Gladiator's Spell Blade in the main hand and Vicious Gladiator's End Game in your off hand. The wand slot's going to be occupied by the Vicious Gladiator's Touch of Defeat. For your jewelry, you're going to want to pick up Vicious Gladiator's Pendant of Alacrity. For your rings, you're going to want to grab the Vicious Gladiator's Band of Dominance and Accuracy. Now, this is where a majority of our hit is going to come from. Finally, for your trinkets, you'll then use the Dark Moon card Volcano. If you find yourself struggling to survive, you can drop this for the Vicious Gladiator's Insignia of Dominance. Now, when it comes to reforging, your goal is to reforge everything to crit or mastery. Since we recommend going full mastery, we're going to be reforging any leftover stats to mastery. 
With your gear sorted, let's get everything gymmed and enchanted. Your best enchants are not going to change as the expansion progresses. Your helmet enchant, Arcanum of Vicious Intellect, comes from PvP, so it's going to be relatively easy to obtain. Your second enchant is Greater Inscription of Vicious Intellect for your shoulders. This too comes from PvP. Then head to the Auction House, where you're going to be picking up the rest of your enchants. For the chest, you can either do Peerless Stats or Mighty Resilience. Mighty Resilience helps to increase your survivability, but in comps where you might not be the target, the extra damage from Peerless Stats is going to be beneficial. You'll then grab Mighty Intellect for your Bracers, Mastery for your Gloves, Lava Walker for your Boots. We recommend tailoring for your profession, which means your cloak is going to be enchanted with light weave embroidery. For the remaining slots, embellish your legs with Sapphire Spell Thread, and then put Power Torrent on your main hand and Superior Intellect on your offhand. Finally, don't forget to get an Even Steel Belt Buckle for an extra gym slot. And speaking of which, let's get things gymmed. For your Meta Socket, you're going to be slotting in a Burning Shadow Spirit Diamond, this is going to provide you with some intellect and increase the amount of damage that your critical strikes deal. In your red slots, you have a couple of options. You can use Brilliant Inferno Ruby for more damage, or you can use Willful Ember Topaz for a little more tankiness. In your blue slots, you're going to need one Veiled Demon's Eye for hit, and then the rest will be Brilliant Inferno Rubies as there are no blue gems worth taking for Frost Mage. And then in yellow sockets, put a potent and Artful Ember Topaz for some Critical Strike, Mastery, and Intellect. Professions are going to matter once more in Cataclysm, and there are a few choices here. You want to go Jewel Crafting and Tailoring, but you do have some flexibility here. Your first default pick is Tailoring for Lightweave Embroidery. This enchant provides a massive spell power buff, which provides a sizable increase to our damage. This can be crucial for landing kills during important windows, or we can save our CC for this proc. Jewel Crafting is our second pick, and this is gonna allow us to use the Chimera's Eye gems. We're gonna use the Brilliant Chimera's Eyes for more damage, but you do have the option of using Mystic Chimera's Eyes for more resilience if you're struggling to survive. You do have the option of going blacksmithing as an alternative to Jewel Crafting, and it is technically slightly less stats in Season 9, but it's gonna be more stats in later seasons when we have access to epic gems. Finally, let's wrap things up with every macro you're going to need to be competitive in PvP. First up, you'll want focus macros for Fire Blast, Counter Spell, Deep Freeze, and Polymorph. These are your main forms of CC and control, so you're going to want to be able to reliably and quickly shut down the healer during your damage windows. Remember, you only want to use Focus Fire Blast with an impact proc for the stun. If you're looking to elevate your macros, you can take these and turn them into Arena 1-2-3 macros for Polymorph, Fire Blast, Deep Freeze, and Counter Spell. This is going to give you the most control and speed if you can afford the Keybind space. Now you're going to want a macro to remove Curse for Party 1 and 2. This can be good for things such as Hex or Agony. You're going to also want a macro to cancel your Ice Block. You can't deal damage while Ice Blocked once your healers topped you off, then you cancel this ability if it's safe to do so. Now it's time for our damage macro. We simply want to pair Icy Veins with our damage trinket to maximize the amount of damage we deal during this window. Finally, we need some macros for our Water Elemental. This first macro is very useful as it saves you a bind. If your Elemental isn't out, then it's going to summon it, but if it is out, then it's going to cast Freeze. You'll also want a macro that forces your Water Elemental to attack your target. All right, guys, that about wraps it up for this one. Before you go, though, be sure to check out Skill Capped. We are the only service that dares to literally guarantee you're going to climb at least 400 rating when actively using our service. And, uh, well, if you don't, you don't pay. Simple as that. As always, though, we want to thank you all for watching, and we'll see you soon.